On the northern tip of Queensland, there are celebrations tonight to mark the end of an epic battle for Indigenous land rights. The Wik Mungan people on Cape York Peninsula have been given their land after a struggle lasting 40 years that became a test case for federal anti-discrimination laws. And in a move that surprised some of the Wik people, the new Conservative Premier Campbell Newman today apologised for this notorious chapter in Queensland's Indigenous history. From Cohen on Cape York Peninsula, Peninsula Peter McCutcheon reports. In the heart of Cape York Peninsula, Martha Kuata is taking her grandchildren on an emotional journey back to country. They all excited, don't leave me, don't leave me. So I told them, well, jump on the plane. <laughs> they were happy. <laughs> this is the Cohen River on the edge of Munkunkanju National Park. It's an area with a remarkable history caught up in an infamous land rights battle led by Martha Kuwata's late husband. I believe Uncle John Kuwata played a pivotal role uh, in the history here in Cape York, but I would actually say that um, his influence spread much further. That's because John Kuwata's battle is a story not only about people regaining traditional land, it's also about a court case that opened up a whole new area of Commonwealth law. The Kuwata case proved that Australia could have a national law about human rights or uh, prohibiting discrimination on the basis of race or some other ground. Without that outcome, there would have been, for example, no Mabo case in 1992, 10 years later. This footage was taken of John Kuwata shortly before his death in 1991. He'd made a name for himself for his bold attempt 20 years earlier to buy a cattle lease over his traditional lands with federal government assistance. Land have been, you know, look after it, you know, for a long time before any, like, those government now, today, doing that sort of land. We can protect the land. In 1974, the then Queensland Bajelki peterson government stopped John Kawata from buying the lease on the grounds that Aboriginal people already had enough land. The matter eventually ended up in the High Court and the dispute turned into a constitutional argument over the validity of the Commonwealth's Anti-Discrimination Act. John Kawata's legal team won by a 4-3 majority. Thank you. That, uh, a national law prohibiting racial discrimination hung by a thread in the High Court in 1982. It was an issue that split the court right down the middle. By upholding the validity of the Commonwealth's use of its external affairs power to implement international treaties, the case paved the way for other landmark High Court decisions, such as the Franklin Dam dispute. Forty protesters who had been waiting in the wilderness for eight hours occupied the landing. It represents a, a late 20th century encounter for Australia between its federation and its membership of the international community. But there was a sting in the tail of the story, because the bajelki peterson government still succeeded in stopping the Wik Munkin people with what critics described as an act of spitefulness and prejudice. It declared the area a national park. As John Kawata later complained to one of the original High Court judges in the landmark case, Sir Ninian Stephen. After I won that case, they turned that international park which I can't go. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So that you're really no further advanced no. as far as ownership of the land is concerned. Yeah. It took a long time to unscramble the egg. In late 2010, the Bly government passed special legislation to actually revoke part of the national park. This decision puts an end to a shameful chapter in Queensland's Indigenous history. 19 months later and we're on the verge of finalising the land transfer. Wik Mungan people have come from all over the Cape to here in Cohen to sign off on a joint management agreement with the Queensland Government. It will end a dispute that began nearly 40 years ago. Some documents in your wallet which relate to... The Wik Mungan voted to accept the agreement, which includes setting aside 32,000 hectares, their freehold land, for a nature reserve. It's been a long time coming. It's been a lot of meetings, a lot of talk, 
and particularly the last few years uh, a number of people um, have been worried that we're losing more and more of our old, old people. It's such a shame that Uncle John wasn't able to be here um, to actually see this country finally handed back. That it was the older people who led the celebrations today after the land was officially handed over. <laughs> Queensland Premier Campbell Newman created a buzz during the handover ceremony when he apologised for the way the Wick Munkin people had been treated. Today I want to confront the issue that is 35 years ago a great injustice was perpetrated. And today we're here to put that right. We're here to make sure that it is right forever and to give back to people what was rightfully theirs. I'm sure if all Queenslanders knew the story of what happened in 1977 and afterwards, they would feel as sorry as I do myself. So today my apologies to those that have suffered. What does it mean to you to hear that apology today from the Premier? Ah, it, it, it means a, a, a great deal to us for uh, what's been happening over the last 30 years or something. Before the ceremony, John Kuata's widow spoke of a dull sadness. But today was a day for rejoicing. Were you surprised to hear that apology? Oh, I'm really proud. It's a big surprise for me. Peter McCutcheon reporting.